listening to GCN, the world leader in independent talk radio. All right, shifting gears. We're not going to keep him long. I had him on last hour, and I rescheduled him. I apologize. Uh, we um, we have him on with us, uh, Paul Ford, uh, and Duncanville, Texas City Council member who was arrested by the mayor for speaking out against red light cameras. You can YouTube or search engine uh, city councilman beat up by police for speaking. I got stuff out of Indiana where they're punching him in the face. And um, this is usually when they expose some secret meeting or corruption. Now, red light cameras by state court this year were world illegal. And I had the Austin police chief in here, and he said, we don't care what the state says. We're doing it. Uh, and uh, the legislature's you know, been trying to fight it. Uh, but going to Mr. Ford, Ford, uh, tell us uh, what happened to you as an elected representative up in uh, Duncanville uh, for daring to speak out at a city council meeting. Well, what happened was this. Uh, earlier that evening in briefing, which is a, about an hour-long meeting that precedes the open meeting itself, the mayor told me that if I spoke when he told me not to, he would have me arrested. And I explained to him at the time in the briefing room that I'm like all those thousands and thousands of people who are getting red light camera tickets who are not entitled to trials by jury. I would be entitled to a trial by jury if he arrested me for whatever it was he had in mind. And I would, with confidence, put my fate in their hands. So we go out on the floor for the actual meeting, and agenda item three was a They've squandered so much money in our city, we have a huge deficit now. And so they're trying to cut back on essential services like street repairs. So they had a bill out to cancel a $59,000 contract for a street repair company, and I was going to speak against it. So it was my turn to speak, and I said, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Before I address agenda item three, I want to let everyone know what the mayor told me in briefing a few minutes ago. And I related what I told you just now. And it took all of 30 seconds. So about halfway into it, the mayor starts banging his gavel and shouting at me that I'm out of order. And then it was all rehearsed. He called for the city manager. The city manager, Kent Cagle, called for the police chief, Robert Brown. And at that point, the city manager got up, walked behind me, tapped one of the other councilmen on the shoulder. And then all the other councilmen, except one who wasn't in on it, got up and walked off. Police chief came over to one side, marshal came over to the other side, and a third man, another officer in plain clothes, walked behind them with a video camera. So you can just imagine this parade of people coming up. And by that time, I had finished my 30-second digression about how I would welcome a jury of my peers and I would confidently put my fate in their hands, and I returned to the agenda item, agenda item three. And I began with, I will not vote for this, and here are my reasons why. This is a contract. This is a bill to cancel a street repair contract, and I don't believe we should. And at that point, the police chief came over to me and said, I'm going to ask you to leave voluntarily. So I stood up, put my hands behind my back, and said, I will not leave voluntarily. However, if you believe that I'm violating the law by discussing this agenda item, I will submit to arrest without resistance. So he repeated I want you to leave voluntarily. And I repeated what I said, that I won't leave voluntarily, but I'll submit to arrest without resistance. And understand, I have my hands behind my back at this point, waiting to be handcuffed. They never said to me, you're under arrest. They never said, if you don't leave, you'll be arrested. Nothing like that. With my hands behind my back, offering to be handcuffed, they acted as if I was resisting. Oh, and yeah. they grabbed me. Yeah, they grabbed me and started dragging me along. And I said, hey, you know, I've had back surgery twice. And that kind of encouraged them to be more rough. Mm. And as they're dragging me along, I started to stumble on the steps. Then as we entered into the corridor leading away from the city council chamber, I started to fall, and they pushed me down oh. onto the ground, and I landed very heavily on my side. Oh. And, yeah. So I, mean, I Yeah. Yeah. So I ended up being having to go to the hospital. And they, they never placed me under arrest. They didn't send an officer w w in the ambulance with me. It and by the way, there's photos and videos of this out, and the newspapers all report that exactly what you're saying is what happened. Mm -hmm. Right. And uh, you're lucky they didn't taser you. Uh, separately, they've introduced a bill, H.R. 1966, that if something you say is hurtful, and someone says that was hurtful to me or hurt my feelings, you're going to be charged with a federal felony. So... Free speech itself is under incredible attack. Uh, please continue, uh, fellow thought criminal. <laughs> well, 
Well, I guess that 1966 is just a variation of the old theme of a hate crime. Yeah. I imagine. Well, so so I'm in I'm in the hospital bed and my back I can't move. I'm urinating on on my side into like a one of those plastic things that they give you in the hospital. And I look on the TV and there's the mayor saying that they've issued a warrant for my arrest. So it turns out they got a local judge, a city employee, serving as a magistrate, signed a warrant for me. I'm charged now in Texas with a class B misdemeanor of disrupting a public meeting. So I'm in the hospital for four days. I'm, I, at the time this, uh, of this event happened, I was using one cane because, as I said, I've had back surgery twice, most recently in 2006. So when I left the hospital, I had the choice, either use a walker or use two canes. By the way, I found being handicapped or disabled for a time only from what I've seen, and I don't know exactly why, that seems to encourage thugs, kind of like a wolf-like mentality right. of, a, of a hurt sheep or something. Uh -huh. I've never understood. <laughs> they seem to piranha on anybody that's hurt. Yeah, yeah. It's an interesting observation you've made that because it, uh, I've definitely found that true with the members of the city council. And as my back condition has gotten worse, they have gotten more aggressive, and they finally just went all out uh, on April 7th. Yeah, their predatory spirit comes out. Now, uh, getting back to the red light cameras, they had to remove sure. them in San Diego, as it sounds like you know, uh, because under the Constitution, you get to face your accuser. This is a robot, a computer. Yeah, they exactly. had Lockheed Martin, the defense contractor, making money off of it. I mm -hmm. know state courts in Texas have said they can't do this without having uh, a, a license for private exactly. detective work. Yeah, the war but, case. But, mm -hmm. but, but they just don't care. I had the Austin police chief, and he said, I don't care. We have SWAT teams. Stand by for rule. They'll 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 do it until they can't get away with it. Until the politicians who enable these things are voted out of office. Now I know that there are many people in the Texas state who are against it. I've been in close contact with many members of the Urban Affairs Committee, for example, and there's a lot of sentiment to do away with them. Yeah, polls but, are over ninety percent in the state against it, and everywhere else. But oh, yeah. again, magically it just continues. You, we don't want the. I mean, on every issue, we don't want it. And the government just says, "Look, Northcom standing by. You know, the military standing by. This is the new America." But you know, Alex, the big, the real problem that I'm encountering here in Duncanville, Texas, is tremendous voter apathy. People will say that they're upset about something, but as to taking any action, even just voting, uh, most people just aren't willing to do that. I mean, we'll be lucky this election if we have 10 or 11 percent of eligible voters actually voting. Yeah, the national the average is 8.2 percent turnout, but they'll turn oh, yeah. out with some stupid presidential diversion when the real power is locally. So, so you're hurt in the hospital right. on your side, urinating mm -hmm. into a into a bucket. Uh, <laughs> well, what not quite, but similar to that. Yeah. Well, you said into something. The point is, it, it, yeah. so you're there. This is going on. You're now right. th they're grandstanding on TV. You're this arch criminal on the loose. What happens uh -huh. next? Yeah, well, they actually played that up quite a bit. The uh, the mayor was they they uh, they contradicted themselves, but they were trying to get across the idea that I'm this dangerous felon. And of course, this is my my first so far, my only uh, arrest for anything. And the mayor said that uh, the city manager Ken Cagle said that they have had to increase the police presence at the city hall whenever I'm there. Oh. And the mayor, yeah, and he was said, well, because with all that's happening, you just don't know. That was his excuse for this you know, overtime. And then the uh, mayor said that they are, from now on, they are going to assign a full-time officer to me whenever I'm in the building. Because, and he actually said this to a reporter, he said, because Mr. Ford is a mystery man who has conspiracy theories. So uh, they're painting me as, as this very violent guy. So I get out of the hospital. I'm limping along on two canes now. As I said, it was either that or, or Walker, and I already had the two canes. I heard you may actually be the the the, 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 the person known as Godzilla. I mean, you're like, come from the <laughs> sea, from the deep. You're like this deadly kraken. Uh, I mean, you're a boogeyman. You're what children fear under beds. I mean, how dare you not want the red light cameras? The mayor and people, this is very important. You know that uh, they get all this done. So, so, so you're out there on the cane, vicious, yeah. deadly. Well, one, one thing I want to point out that the red light cameras, that and, and a website that I recently set up, Paul Ford Reports, were kind of the, the uh, proverbial straw that broke the camel's back. I have been for the two years I've, I've been on the council, 
constantly uh, asking a lot of questions that the other members, most of the other members of the city council, do not want asked, and bringing up a lot of connections, campaign contributions, relationships, things like that. Oh, There's a lot of, oh yeah. yeah. There's a lot of money being wasted on, on uh, developments that don't go anywhere. There's a lot of sweetheart deals. It's just a constant sort of thing. There's, there's like everything has to it some sort of secondary agenda where there's some money being diverted. I mean, even, even such simple things as uh, we're running up this huge budget deficit and now they're instituting forced uh, furloughs. They're letting, they're letting, uh, giving workers days off without pay and, you know, no uh, mandatory, mandatory in that. And, they're still, the city council members are still traveling around the country going to Reno and Orlando on these uh, junkets, allegedly. For Maybe they should just declare themselves conference. royalty. Uh, the councilmen uh, declare themselves royalty and start wearing <laughs> crowns or something. Let me add a point here. I have the Department of Homeland Security. You probably heard about the report a month ago where they said veterans and gun owners are the number one terror threat. Right, right, right. Well, this is the appendix to that. It says alternative media that make connections. So maybe you're a terrorist because you're making <laughs> connections about political contributions to them and then the, and, and then what they're doing.